things that worry me about Deleuze, I guess, are some of the oppositions with which he still seems to be operating. You mentioned the virtual and uh, the actual. And obviously one of the things that Deleuze wants to avoid is what he sees in Kant. So he sees Kant beginning with, 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 with what he takes to be actual experience and sort of constructing conditions of the possibility which just reflect the very experience. So you're just sort of reduplicating. Um, and, and, and actually Deleuze's criticism of Kant there is a little bit like he what Hegel says about formal ground in the logic. Um, where, um, and actually this is relating back to Newton. I mean, maybe Newton in inverted commas rather than the real Newton. But um, what, one of the things Hegel is worried about is a form of explanation which takes a particular phenomenon and then explains it through a condition or a ground or a force which is just that very same phenomenon in a different form you just kind of get and so so Deleuze and Hegel share that same concern that 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 in neither case is anything explained there you just get a doubling of what you think you've already got however I suppose in my Hegelian eyes I would say that doesn't mean to say that you need to have the kind of absolute difference that Deleuze seems to want between the sphere of the virtual and the sphere of the actual because the sphere of the virtual is marked by um, differences, processes, which don't seem to manifest themselves as such in the apparently concrete identities that we find within the actual. So identity might be a good one. Um, it seems, as I understand Deleuze, that there is no identity as such within the sphere of the virtual. We've got pure difference. Identity then arises, as it were, in this process whereby the virtual um, actualizes itself. But it arises, as it were, as a kind of secondary effect almost. Now, why does Deleuze insist that the virtual has to lack identity in that way? Um, so, and I think the fact that you get that sharp difference, and obviously there are, there are many more of them, um, I think should make us think that Hegel's unlikely to have a structure that is exactly like that. Um, I think Hegel acknowledges that there is um, something that's not actuality that's also not just possibility and necessity. Okay, so Deleuze is, what do you say, the virtual is not just possibility, okay? I think Hegel would say, yeah, fine, 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 fine. Okay, that's good. There is a difference that Hegel draws between the, as if like, the formally possible and the really possible. Real possibility. It's an idea that you find in Kant and you find in Leibniz as well. Whereas it were, you've got a situation that contains, I'm tempted to say virtually, the conditions of something that hasn't yet manifested itself yet. Those conditions are real. And they will and they do actualize themselves. They're not just sort of vague possibilities that could or could not come about. They're real possibilities that actualize themselves. But Hegel thinks those real possibilities don't have a completely different structure from the actuality that arises. And they can't be seen as quasi-transcendental conditions. That's another thing that worries me about Deleuze is that the virtual seems to take the place of, a, of the transcendental um, in that it's 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 a it's it's a set it's a ground it's a set of real conditions genetic conditions but which never manifest themselves as such um yeah i think hegel would think nah, you know the 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 the, the idea of that i suppose one of hegel's thoughts <laughs> that is perhaps anti deleuzian is that there's nothing that doesn't manifest itself there is for Hegel nothing ultimately hidden. This is why, again, I think he's different from Heidegger. Hegel thinks that that everything will out itself in some way or another. Um, you know, the inner externalizes itself and it can't but externalize itself. And even when it tries to hide itself, it will externalize itself in hiding itself. You know, and of course, the psychological um, consequences of that are enormous, which is why Hegel's so interested in the philosophy of spirit in gesture in language in the way that gestures can betray what's going on inside you um 
So, yeah, that, I mean, you know, if I knew more about the Deleuze, I could give you more, but I would say it's a very good question to ask and, and work away at it. <laughs> um, but I think there are aspects of Deleuze thinking that just are not compatible with Hegel because Deleuze draws sharper distinctions than I think Hegel would want to draw.